to electricity. Usually you do that in some form of steam, but there are other methods too, including thermocouples. If you've ever seen something producing waste heat, you'll appreciate Penn State's work to harvest power from hot pipes. The idea is simple in theory. Create a flexible thermoelectric generator that can wrap around hot pipes or other surfaces to gather otherwise lost heat. The devices can produce up to 150% more power per unit area compared to other thermoelectric generators. A 3 square inch test device produced over 50 watts. Scale that up to an industrial pipe hundreds of feet long and you could create some serious power. To accomplish this, the scientists used strips of six thermocouples and connected them for a total of 72 thermocouples. Liquid metal between layers improved the device's performance. Now this isn't a totally new idea. Russia was famous for making radios way back in the 1950s that operated using a generator that went around the flue of a kerosene lamp. Since the Russians were pulling this off in the 1950s, converting heat into electricity is obviously nothing new. Of course, your body creates heat too, so why not use that? From Australia, this is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. Available on RF and on demand 24-7 from the wia.org.au website. Intruder watched the enforcement zone and Germany's Dark reports on a pirate station that was broadcasting in the 3.5 and 7 meg amateur radio bands. In December and January, an underground political station appeared on 3500 and 7000 kilohertz. The transmissions took place usually in upper sideband and could be heard right throughout Europe. The radio program in Italian and English was directed against government corona measures. The Direction Finding Service of the Intruder Monitoring Department was able to determine the approximate location, whereupon they cooperated with the federal network agency, the Benetza, to have these transmissions ended. The Benetza was then able to take measures with the Italian colleagues that ultimately led to the broadcast being completely discontinued. Pirate Spam, an infamous Soviet shortwave radio station with memes. The UVB-76 number station, which dates from the Soviet era but is still online today and is used to broadcast everything from Gangnam Style to audio that draws memes when inspected under a spectrum analyzer. For decades, the number station, known as UVB-76, has emitted an enigmatic series of beeps and a voice reading numbers and names in what people suspect is a long-running communication method for Russian intelligence. Since the broadcast is public, pirates are able to use their software-defined radios, their SDR transmitters, to effectively flood the frequency with noise and memes. While many number stations have become obsolete or redundant, several broadcasts remain on the air, much to the fascination of amateur radio hobbyists. Now, special interest group news with Bruce, VK3 Triple F. And a very good day to you. Worldwide, special interest group news. And to start, summits on the air. Worldwide flora, fauna program, parks on the air and other adventure groups. WIA congratulates SOTA VK on their 10-year anniversary. This is a great milestone and achievement by many dedicated SOTA Summits on the Air operators, promoting one of the various and popular aspects of amateur radio activities with a combination of the outdoors and bushwalking. We'd suggest you head to WIA front page news. Just go to wia.org.au. Worldwide Special Interest Groups Computing The University of Cambridge has announced the creation of the Raspberry Pi Computing Education Research Centre. With computers and digital technologies increasingly shaping all of our lives, it's more important than ever that every young person, whatever their background or circumstances, has meaningful opportunities to learn about how computers work and how to create with them. The Raspberry Pi Computing Education Research Centre wants to increase understanding of what works in teaching and learning computing, with a particular focus on young people who come from backgrounds that are traditionally underrepresented in the field of computing or who experience educational disadvantage. Worldwide Special Interest Groups Final Frontier 
The Kenwood D710 transceiver on the International Space Station, ISS, is in cross-band FM mode again. The downlink frequency is 437.8 MHz and the uplink is on 145.990 MHz with a subtone of 67 Hz. The ISS signal is quite strong. A simple dual-band antenna and transceiver is sufficient for stable contacts. Worldwide special interest groups, medical, healthy hams. USKA, the union of Swiss radio amateurs, has launched a health initiative for its members. Recognising that older YLs and OMs would like to exchange their experiences and support each other when confronted with health issues. Overseen by physician Dr. Heinz Hofstetter, HB9HVS, help and advice is available to members of all ages, accessible via the Health Advisor Ham Group on the USKA web portal. Worldwide Special Interest Group, Military. In addition to fulfilling the American Legion's mission of continuing to serve community, state and nation, post programs and activities offer avenues to attract new members who find those avenues meaningful to them. More members means more opportunities to fulfil the Legion's mission. The Legion is much like VK's RSL. One such avenue is a post-ham radio club. The National American Legion Amateur Radio Club, T-A-L-A-R-C, estimates there are more than 50 post clubs and more than 4,500 Talak Legionnaires across the country. Among these are clubs in Florida and Colorado that have established themselves as active participants in Legion life. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, QRP and Weak Signal Communication The International Whisper Beacon Group plan to provision a whisper transmitter in ZL. WSPR, pronounced whisper, stands for Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. The whisper transmitter, custom made by Zactec, based in Sweden, was supplied to Branch 20 of NZART by the International Whisper Beacon Group at no cost. It's a 200 milliwatt RF output, 5 band, 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres. The transmitter is controlled by Arduino firmware, which along with a built-in GPS, takes care of all timing, including the five-band coordinated whisper band hopping transmit schedule, following the WSJTX implementation protocol. Currently, globally, there are 40 whisper 200 milliwatt beacons operational on a 24-7 basis. All are coordinated to transmit on the same band at the same time. The ZL2KO 200 milliwatt whisper signal, to name just a few, has been heard in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Luxembourg, East Coast USA and Finland, both on short and long path that's approximately 18,000 kilometres on 200 milliwatts. Also, North and South America and Antarctica. Worldwide special interest groups, YOTA, Youth on the Air. Over in New Zealand at the NZ Art, their National Representative Society, a new youth officer, Brendan Graham Island, ZL2SB, has been appointed. Whilst over, in Region 2, amateur radio and after-school program. The Folkwear 4H Ham Radio Club provides local youth with opportunities to explore science, technology, engineering, art and maths through amateur radio communications and electronics projects. Folkwear now reports the after-school program will make 4-H activities accessible to more children. The program will engage them in hands-on STEM projects while helping them develop life skills. Programs offered throughout the year will target different grade levels and student interests. A pilot program at Grace Miller Elementary School in the fall focused on robotics for kindergartners and first graders. Students tackled challenges such as designing a battle bot that they controlled with lightsabers and coding a robot to navigate through a maze. Other potential offerings include space exploration, veterinary science and coding. 
there will also be opportunities to partner with 4-H clubs. For example, the Fauquier County 4-H Ham Radio Club recently received a grant from Amateur Radio Digital Communications to build a ham radio trailer that can be hauled to different schools to give participants a hands-on experience. I'm Bruce, VK3 Triple F from Sunny Bendigo. Now to tie the ribbon, the 2022 social scene. In VK6, the Peel Amateur Radio Group Swap Meet, the 26th of February, Mandua Bowling Club at 9am. VK4, Redfest, Saturday, April 9, St. Michael's College, Caboolture. VK5, the South Coast Amateur Radio Club's Buy and Sell, Sunday, April 24. And also in VK5, Australian Fox Hunting Championship and the Sir Convention, Mount Gambier, Queen's Birthday Weekend in June. So now, until next we meet, I am Graham, VK4BB. Walk softly. There's a really quick reminder, the Ross Hull contest logs are due in on Monday the 14th of February. Happy Valentine's Day to you all. 7-3, Trent, VK4TS. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.
In 2021, we touched down on Mars, then reached new heights on the Red Planet. We also made progress preparing for a flight test around the Moon. And we had a very busy year in low Earth orbit, exploring other deep space destinations, addressing climate change here on our home planet, testing technologies for next generation aircraft, and much more. Here's a look back at those and other things we did this year at NASA. There were plenty of developments in 2021 with existing and future missions designed to explore our solar system and beyond. Touch on confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. The Perseverance rover landed on Mars in February and later collected its first rock core sample, which could be retrieved and returned to Earth by a future mission. While the Ingenuity helicopter, a technology demonstration on that mission, became the first aircraft to make a powered, controlled flight on another planet. We completed testing of the James Webb Space Telescope and sent it to its launch site in French Guiana. The wide array of science missions we sent to space included the first mission to study the polarization of X-rays, the first spacecraft to visit Jupiter's Trojan asteroids, and our first planetary defense test mission. Our Chandra X-ray Observatory may have detected signs of a planet crossing in front of a star outside of our Milky Way galaxy for the first time. While our Parker Solar Probe provided surprising views of Venus during a close flyby and became the first spacecraft in history to touch the Sun, flying through and sampling the environment in the Sun's upper atmosphere. And the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, helped discover a trio of hot worlds larger than Earth orbiting a much younger version of our Sun. Some new but familiar faces took on leadership roles at the agency. The Biden-Harris administration chose former Senator and Space Shuttle Payload Specialist Bill Nelson and former Astronaut and Space Shuttle Commander Pam Nelroy as NASA's newest Administrator and Deputy Administrator, respectively. Some of our work in 2021 reflected the Biden-Harris administration's commitment to addressing climate change and its effect on our home planet, something NASA is uniquely positioned to do. We announced our Earth System Observatory, a new set of missions to help guide efforts related to climate change, disaster mitigation, fighting forest fires, and improving real-time agricultural processes. And lift off. Lift off of an Atlas V rocket in Landsat 9. We partnered with the U.S. Geological Survey to launch the Landsat 9 satellite, built to continue the program's 50-year track record of monitoring the planet's changing landscapes. Several weeks later, Vice President Kamala Harris visited the agency as we unveiled the satellite's first images. NASA conducted and participated in a series of climate change studies related to high tide floods and Earth's energy imbalance and energy budget. This animation shows as part of a global response to climate change, we participated in the UN Climate Change Conference. We captured data with a specialized instrument on the space station to help fight forest fires in the western U.S. We also coordinated with researchers to develop dashboards on the spread and effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, including tracking any changes to worldwide air pollution. And we launched an online platform called OpenET to help farmers and water managers in 17 western U.S. states accelerate improvements and innovations in water management. 2021 was the busiest year for human spaceflight at the International Space Station in a decade. It also marked the start of the 21st straight year of humans living and working in space. The splashdown of our SpaceX Crew-1 mission marked the completion of the first operational commercial crew flight to the station and the first nighttime splashdown of a U.S. crewed spacecraft since Apollo 8 in 1968. And liftoff, Godspeed, Endeavor, and Crew-2. Our SpaceX Crew-2 mission followed that. It was the first commercial crew mission to fly two international partners and spent a record 199 days in space. And in November, NASA's SpaceX Crew-3 mission arrived at the space station for a planned six-month scientific research mission. Astronauts and cosmonauts completed 13 spacewalks outside the space station, the most in a year since 2010. With no slowdown to human spaceflight in sight, we introduced 10 new astronaut candidates in early December. 
We also accepted applications for the next class of flight directors and announced plans for the agency's first two private astronaut missions to the International Space Station. Cargo missions flown to the space station by our commercial partners delivered more than 33,000 pounds of science, tools, and critical supplies and returned thousands of pounds of research and equipment to Earth. And we signed agreements with three companies to develop early concepts of commercial destinations as part of our efforts to enable a robust American-led commercial economy in low Earth orbit. We made significant progress in 2021 preparing for the Artemis I integrated flight test around the moon next year. Engineers at our Kennedy Space Center finished installing and testing components and systems for the Orion spacecraft to make sure it is ready for Artemis I. Meanwhile, teams at our Stennis Space Center completed the eight-part Green Run test campaign with the Space Launch System or SLS rocket's core stage. There was also work in 2021 toward future Artemis missions to the moon with astronauts. We delivered a key piece of Artemis II flight hardware to Florida, completed the welding of another major piece of hardware for the mission, and conducted a series of water impact testing with a test version of Orion. We partnered with SpaceX to continue development of the first commercial human lunar lander. Through Artemis, we plan to land the first woman and first person of color on the moon. Working with commercial partners, we completed the first propulsion system ground tests with the power and propulsion element for Gateway. Also, Japan became the third nation to support development of the lunar outpost. And the lunar landing site for our Viper robotic rover was selected, a region just outside the western edge of Nobile Crater at the moon's south pole. Viper will be delivered to the moon in 2023 through our Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative, or CLIPS, part of Artemis. We advanced space technology in 2021 with new concepts to help drive space exploration and benefit life on Earth. Our laser communications relay demonstration was launched to highlight the next era of space communications. We teamed with the Department of Energy to advance nuclear spacecraft propulsion technologies and fission surface power concepts to boost future space exploration. An onboard suite of cutting-edge technology helped the Perseverance rover land safely on Mars, provide its first weather report, and produce oxygen on the Red Planet for the first time. And our Deep Space Atomic Clock concluded a successful two-year mission to advance precise timekeeping in space. We continued our aeronautics research efforts this year to validate unique airframe design technologies for more quiet, safe, and efficient flight on next-generation aircraft. We reached several milestones in assembly of our X-59 quiet supersonic technology aircraft and removed the experimental airplane from its external construction supports. Meanwhile, we completed high-voltage testing on our all-electric X-57 Maxwell aircraft. We conducted wind tunnel testing with a full-scale concept X-plane, the centerpiece of a national partnership with industry, academia, and other agencies to achieve net zero emissions in aviation by 2050. We wrapped up our Airspace Technology Demonstration 2 project after six years of successful research into reducing flight delays, streamlining airport operations, and curbing emissions. We conducted flight tests with an all-electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft to collect data critical to our Advanced Air Mobility National Campaign. And a wildfire management workshop NASA hosted demonstrated how emergency responders can fight fires more safely and effectively using NASA technology. We launched our Mission Equity Initiative in 2021 as part of a federal government effort to support historically underserved and underrepresented communities. Our headquarters building in Washington was named after Mary W. Jackson, the first African-American female engineer at NASA. She was part of a group of women whose work was critical to sending the first Americans to space. And students who are deaf, blind, hearing, and visually impaired connected with astronauts aboard the space station during an in-flight event to promote inclusion in space. There were plenty of opportunities in 2021 for students to engage in NASA STEM-related activities. NASA collaborated with future engineers to create the Artemis Moon Pod SA Contest, 
in which nearly 14,000 students from every state in the country participated. Our Mission to Mars Student Challenge demonstrated how science, math, and creativity are used to design, build, launch, and land a Mars mission. We published First Woman, the agency's first digital interactive graphic novel in English and Spanish. Student teams designed and launched climate remote sensing and space exploration experiments on suborbital rockets and high altitude balloons. And the agency awarded funding to minority serving institutions to study our home planet, develop space technology, and expand participation in science, technology, engineering, and math fields. When all is said and done, the underlying reason we do what we do, from advancing space exploration to making groundbreaking scientific and technical discoveries, to monitoring the health of our planet, to developing innovative modes of transportation, is to benefit you. Those are some of the highlights from what NASA did in 2021. For more details, visit nasa.gov slash 2021. Thanks for watching. Please have a safe, healthy, and happy holiday season, and we look forward to sharing more NASA highlights with you in 2022.